Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm fucking freezing, man. It's hey, it's not yesterday. And, in London, uh, yeah. You're in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In London. And it hasn't snowed in I don't know in ages in London, right? Uh, so uh, it was nice. It was nice. But are you prepared freezing. for the cold? Did you bring stuff or not really? <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I wish I could show. This. I wish I could show this. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like all all covered up. I have the I have the heating under my ass. So it's good. It's good. Yeah. Where are you? At? How are you? Because I see a bed, but I see also like a, a a print in the back. Where are you at? Yeah. No. No. I'm. I mean. So I'm in my parents-in-law's house. And mm. that's that's their house across the garden, and they have like a separate room, you know, where they where they rent out to uh to Airbnb guests. Okay, so, you, so your parents live in I, live in London. My parents in law. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So, so I'm so just hijacking. I'm just hijacking their extra room across the garden for for this call because. Uh, yeah, the kiddo's making too much noise. He's playing his his iPad games and stuff. Where are you at? I'm in Milan at the moment because I'm giving uh-huh. a, a giving a couple of seminars in Italy, watercolor okay. seminars. So in between, I'm seeing family and stuff. And now my uh, now he's asleep. But my cousin has a baby, which is the cutest thing in the fucking world. Uh, <laughs> if, if he wakes up, I show you. So I'm like, oh, I need to see the baby. I haven't seen him yet. He's uh, 11 months. He's the best. He's always happy, oh. like a little Buddha, you know. So I'm oh. here preparing this stuff, and and then I go to another place, and then back to Denmark, and then I'm looking forward to go home, man. <laughs> to, go, to go back to Barcelona. Look good, yeah, good, good. A little, little bumpy. I didn't tell you what happened after London. Well, not after London. Sorry, in in Paris. Uh, what happened? Like the, after the after party we had. Well, the after the, the after party, you know, it's a bit questionable, but it's uh, fuzzy. It's fuzzy, I, you know. I I was dancing with you a little bit, and then we were dancing a little bit, and then you know things got really blurry. Yeah, yeah. So tell me what happened. <laughs> I got jumped on the way home. No fucking way. Yeah, bro. I didn't even see it coming. Like, luckily but, I was alone. Was you alone. got jumped by how many? How many people? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, I'm more than one, but I don't know how many because I didn't even see them. I I just heard two steps from the back. Boom! Lights yeah. out, and I wake up on the floor. Fuck! Yeah, fucking crazy, man. I wake up on the floor. You know, like covering my face. I guess like instinct or training. You know, and I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you ever passed out. When you passed out, when you come back, you like. You don't know in the, which universe you are, you know, for like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm covering my face and I, I can hear or kind of sense or see because I'm all like confused and there is people there. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. And I'm thinking, I'm on the floor. If they start kicking me, I'm fucked. So I'm thinking, yeah. okay, I need to protect my face. And then yeah, yeah. They, they leave and they didn't take anything. That's the weirdest part, dude. Uh, where, then, where, was, where was this? Like, is it far from the, from the after party place or like, Eight, maybe like nine minutes walk. Motherfucker, what the fuck? So they jumped you for no reason. Yeah, and then from behind, that's that's the most upsetting thing, you know, because at least oh. you had a chance, you know. And then uh, super weird, dude, super weird. And then I just, when I came back, I just saw the legs of the last one turn in the corner. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, what the fuck just happened? And I traveled, dude, I traveled in some crazy places, man. You should see San Jose in Costa Rica or Mexico City, man, you know, and I'm like, yeah. okay. This happened in Paris. Super weird. But I mean, it could have been worse. You know, like I didn't get really oh, hurt. Just my, my elbow is, is, my elbow is a little, you know, but could have been worse. Jeez, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry, man. But crazy, crazy, man. Crazy shit. Could have been worse, you know. And luckily I was alone because my girlfriend was like, oh, I wish I was there. I was like, listen, I would take this a thousand times over, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, instead yeah. of having you there. So, but you know, yeah, shit happens. One more story, you know. Holy fucking crap. That's so fucking that's so fucking unfortunate, man. What yeah, a way to know, end. But you end. know what? You know what? I think it was the last edition because I was staying in the hotel and the last time I was in Paris, it happened to another dude huh? in front of the hotel. Another tattoo at five in the morning in the same place. Oh really? 
Mm. No, but what time? What time did you leave? What time did you leave the place? Because I remember they closed the place at like two or something, right? I think I left like at three thirty or something like this. Yeah, yeah. I was outside talking, you know, with some friends and stuff. You know? Yeah. Wow, crazy, that's crazy. unfortunate, man. That's all right. Yeah, Sorry to know. hear that, man. Shit happens. Just, just puzzling because you don't have like. The circle is not closed. You you had never seen yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. So at so least you don't you don't, you don't you know. know. You don't know why they jumped you because your phone and you, you, you your cash was still on you, right? Phone cash. My, my wallet and phone were on the pocket on my chest, like easily accessible. Yeah. You know, I yeah, must yeah, have yeah, some yeah, yeah. secret ninja haters or something. <laughs> Paris, I don't knows? know, man. Super what weird. the fuck? Yeah, I mean, that's... if they if they if they took your money. At least you know. Okay, I got jumped for my money, right? But if they didn't take anything, what the fuck they jump you for? Like, what the fuck is that? Like some gang withdrawal? I don't, I don't know. Like, I think they, it might be one of to... those, one of those stupid games you see on YouTube. You know, like knockout, like the, the, the dude on the street or something. You know, you see that yeah, stuff on YouTube, which is so the most fucking lame. They're fucking so fucking ridiculous. lame, though. Like it's. You know, you want to take somebody on face front, right? You, you don't want to jump somebody from And you behind. more than that's one. Like, and you more than one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that's like, like a, that's really, 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 really fucked up, man. Yeah, Dude. just, but, uh, you got to let it go because otherwise it's like, it's in there in the head and kind of yeah, bing, yeah, bing, yeah, bing. Yeah, you know, yeah. so just like, oh, yeah, yeah. fuck it. Yeah. Again, could have been worse. But hey, so tell me why you're in London, first of all. Because I mean, I know, but we tell, we tell the people, why. Right? Yeah, I'm in I'm in London to freeze my ass off because Singapore see, is too hot. I can see smoke coming out of your mouth. No, 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 that's my that's my. Oh, that's okay, my okay. I was like, <laughs> you need some better heating. No, uh, uh, I, I'm we we are here to see family. So we we come to London every I think every six months to see my mom in law and my father in law and my sister in law. Nice. So I I don't always I don't always work or I don't always post that I'm in London but I'm in London quite often maybe yeah probably every six months or so. Nice. It was so cool to meet you at the convention with all your crew and stuff. Like you guys are the best. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We had we had like yeah. a we had like a really funny uh um a dinner. Yeah. When the picture of, the, and what? the picture with Omar. I ate ass, but we we're gonna. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get. I ate this, ate this terrible <laughs> French sausage. It's horrible. I still, yeah. Yeah, I still remember the waiter was like. I still remember the waiter was like warning you against it, right? And then you're like, oh, uh, since the waiter's warning me against it, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> the more I should eat it, right? Seriously, but you dude, know what? I'm like, I'm like, what is that? And the guy was like, super serious. If you never had this. Don't eat it. I'm like, look, because you said that, I'm gonna eat it, <laughs> and I regret it for two days. Oh, that was the worst. But nice did sausage. you did did you did you regret it? You didn't regret it, right? It was a good experience. Listen, Eating I'm still ass. regret. I'm still regretting it today. Really? <laughs> I'm still regretting no, I, it today. I tried. Man. I tried a bit. It wasn't that bad. Uh, it was bad, but it wasn't that bad. You know, like it's not that bad. It tasted like ass, man. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was really bad. It was really uh... bad. <laughs> but hey, so uh, uh, Shane, do you would you like to introduce yourself for the people that don't know you? Those, oh, yeah, those yeah, silly yeah. people that don't know you. No, 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 no. Uh, hi, I'm I'm Shane Tan. I'm from Singapore, and I am. <laughs> what else? <laughs> <laughs> Feels like I'm going. I'm doing a video for some dating app. Uh, I'm from Singapore. I'm based. I'm currently based in Singapore. Um, I think I've been in Singapore since 2015, 2014, and then before that, I was spent a couple of years in uh, in Zurich. But before yeah, that. I was born and raised. Yeah, before before 2015, I think I spent uh. A good amount of my twenties in in Zurich and then traveling around in Germany, uh, coming to London for a bit. But yeah, born and raised, born and raised in Singapore. Uh, if you guys don't know where Singapore is, it's the only country in the world where you can't buy fucking chewing gums. You cannot. You didn't know that. No. Yeah, they ban chewing gum, man. 
For real. For real. Steph. And For what's real. some what's some other crazy shit that is legal instead? Well, prostitution is legal. That's amazing. But you can't uh, buy chewing gum. Yeah, but you can't buy chewing gum. Um, what else? I don't know. I could I could go on and on and on and on. You know, I'm gonna Google I'm like, it to see how that happened. Because this kind I of think stuff, too many... I think it's like one dude one day like died or something because he was an idiot. No, 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 no. It was like I'm no, gonna no, mention. No, no, no. What I think they banned it because <laughs> because people were spitting around, people were spitting chewing gums all over, right? I I think I think. You know, I don't, I don't exactly know, but I think it got banned maybe in the eighties or the nineties. Uh, so they they started building this this whole um, uh, train system, the 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 sit the the tube system, like in London, yeah. And I think they were trying to keep it really clean, and people were just stucking shit all over the the chairs and the doors and whatnot, right? So. Singapore being a really, really small country, it's really easy to control. Uh, so they just banned it all together, right? I mean, of course, you can get like nicotine gums and stuff, you know, to help you quit smoking. But uh, the normal bubble gum, they don't sell it. I mean, you won't get you won't get into trouble for bringing in or buying or whatever, right? But they just don't sell it. I can already see people like smuggling like chewing gum in their butts and stuff over the yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, you got like you got like bubble gum meals <laughs> yeah what is this array no chewing gum ah <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah uh, so uh what else i am i am 21 years old in the in the brain <laughs> perfect uh yeah, but this year I turned 38 and I've been tattooing for the last 22 years. Started in, uh, I think I started mid-2000, uh, in June or May of 2000. Uh, in I Singapore? In Singapore, yes. And how was it? How was tattooing in Singapore? Now, now it's different, the internet, all that shit. But, you know, like, how was it before? You know what? When I... When I started getting into tattoos, there were like, I think maybe four or five shops, right? That I, I knew of. I mean, there, there's definitely more in the 90s, but the the ones that were more known, there were only four or five studios. And um, it was, I don't know, that back in, back in the 90s when I started getting tattoos, right? It was... Uh, it was still very, very linked to the triads, the gangs and stuff. So you don't, you don't see, you don't see like normal. I mean, there were a few normal people getting tattoos, but um, most people who got tattoos back then had a different kind of uh, character. I would say it was really not um, not as mainstream as now, which. Yeah. Is, which is which is similar to what happened all around the world, right? When, when the when the social social media uh, revolution began, everything changed all around the world. Uh, yeah, I think I don't know. I think because I was uh, at at the start of my career, I wasn't able to travel, right? So I couldn't really compare. I can't really compare. Uh, how it was like starting in Singapore back in those days compared to what uh, uh, you guys experienced in Europe, right? Because all I hear, I mean, I do ask uh, friends about their experiences starting in the in the early 2000s and in the late 90s. We all, I think we all have similar experiences, no? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, the, the, the internet revolution, that kind of stuff, it... it it kind of put everything on the same level. It's like the globalization of information, right? Because everybody yeah. has access to the same stuff before you had like your local stuff. So then I guess start, like I interviewed a guy, a, guy, a man called Tony Cohen that tattooed for like over 50 years in, the, in Australia. Yeah, Australian, super, Australian tattooer. Yeah, 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 super cool dude. And he was saying that, you know, Do you know before, what? Like, hey, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Sorry. Do you know what? The, uh, Tony Cohen's book, was the first ever fucking tattoo book that I had. 
Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So he, my, my cousin got, I don't know how my cousin got the book, uh, but do you know, do you know he has one book, like this hardcover, uh, um, thick, thick, thick book, yeah? But old, so Tony Cole's- Old stuff you're talking about. I think in the, I think it was uh, published in the 90s. Mm. So that was the first ever uh, tattoo book I had. Anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, you. no worries. Please, like, please the please same carry. thing like you were saying, like, uh, you know, he said that before, like, obviously has a twice, you know, the span of our careers. But, you know, he was saying that when someone would come in the shop, he would be able to be like, oh, you got this tattoo from that person over there. You know, so it's yeah. very you No, know, because uh, everything yeah, is kind yeah, of yeah. leveled. So you see a lot of things that, are very well executed but you could be like oh is it be, is it done by this 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 or that you know yeah. because yeah. the references are the same but anyway yeah. and uh, so how did you how did you start like did you find some did you had to do that by yourself or you found someone that took you in so the the weird the, i mean the the good thing was um my dad and my i think my entire family were friends with a bunch of uh, uh first or second generation Singapore tattooers, right? Uh, so, I at a, at a really young age I was exposed to tattooing because my dad had my dad has tattoos, and uh, I think I if I remember correctly, I was I think in my third I think I was thirteen or fourteen. I asked one of the one of the old timers to tattoo me, and then they were just laughing. Right? They said I was too young. Mm. Uh, I mean, I I I know I was too young, but uh, I think the the interest and the passion started at a really young age. I have no idea why. Maybe it's because of the exposure from my dad. But uh, I remember. 13, 14, I wanted to get tattoos already. And it was not possible to get tattooed by uh, by one of the more reputable guys. So I went and get tattoos by uh, studios that did tattoos for underage kids, right? I mean, I mean, they didn't specialize in tattooing underage kids, but they didn't check IDs of whoever that came in because they were tattooing a lot of gang members, right? And... Uh, none of these gang members wanted their uh, their details to be recorded so it was like a th- it was like a thing you know there was you didn't need to sign any disclaimer forms they didn't ask you your age you just went in and then you got tattooed and i'm pretty sure those guys were not changing needles because the yeah, no the, questions uh, asked uh, i mean yeah but because when i was i remember in the late 90s i was really really young but i could still remember so after the first guy went in, right, uh, that tattooer who tattooed me, he just took his machine the, the, without removing the needles. He just dipped it in two cups of Dettol, right? So Brilliant. he goes one cup of Dettol for a couple of seconds and then he goes to the second cup of Dettol to wash it again, right? It's the second one and that then, does it that kills huh? everything. It's the second yeah, one yeah, that yeah. does it. That kills yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, as long as you have the second cup of Dettol you Don't know, like all second. viruses are gone. <laughs> and, it reminds uh, me of this guy. It reminds me of this guy in the UK, older dude. And I think it wasn't. It wasn't. You know, if you use plastic grips, so you don't know what that is. But they it used to use a thing, Rapidex. I think that was called in the UK. This powder that you put in the ultrasound to get this stuff clean before you put uh, it into yeah. the autoclave. And yeah, you just yeah, yeah, yeah. That. You had a bucket with Rapidex. I think that was the name. And then you just like chuck it in there, like, oh, it's good to go. The fuck? Yeah, but <laughs> you're welcome. But that was, I mean, I, I, I'm safe. I'm alive. So that worked. The, that second cup of the battle worked. <laughs> that did it. And uh, yeah. but so you were never like, because I remember when I started getting, um, we, me and my friend did each other, a tattoo on each other, like when we were 13, we like, you know, suing needles and shit in his bathroom and stuff but when i was 15 then i got my first one again from a guy at home and that kind of stuff the stuff you then now you say don't do you know but and uh, only hooligans no not only hooligans but like hooligans in my seat at that time that's my memory when i was younger you know i would see tattoos on hooligans that was the thing you know and it was tribal right yeah but you were never like 
these people were never scary for you, right? Because you were friends already with the feminine stuff, right? So yes, yes, yes. You just know more, huh? Yeah, I was. I wasn't. I wasn't like taken aback, or I. I wasn't. You know, there was no. There was no element of fear when I saw a heavily tattooed person because, since I was, I don't know, since since I can remember, I've seen heavily tattooed people, and I think that the that um that exposure really really opened up my mind. You know, uh, to not having any any judgment against uh tattooing you know whether it's good or bad i was really really neutral on on uh when i saw a heavily tattooed person yeah and did you tattoo your parents also eventually down the line yeah 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 my uh my first machine was actually bought by my dad that's dope so I, I, you know, like I told my dad, my my parents, that I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to study. I wanna, I wanna uh, uh, pursue that doing right. And I think they thought like it was it was gonna be a passing phase. You know, they thought uh, uh it was just a, a rebellious phase. And so my dad was like, "Yeah, I'll buy you your 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 first tattoo machine." Um for your 16th birthday you still have it no i don't uh, uh, but i don't have it but uh i managed to get uh the 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 exact same model from a from a tattooer in singapore who started in the 70s so did you change uh, it did you change it for chewing gum <laughs> nah. <laughs> Hey, chewing gum's so. harder to find. Chewing gum's <laughs> harder to find in Singapore than anything else. You know, you can find anything else except chewing gum. Honestly, honestly, if you go to Singapore, you ask for anything, you can you can pretty much find anything except chewing gum. Nice. When we when we put a picture for this episode, I'm gonna put just a picture of a chewing gum. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> and and you you come also from punk right you're big into punk the punk scene yeah for sure yeah 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 um i think the 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 whole uh you know i was i was always half and half you know because to be to get into tattooing i mean this is this is from my perspective, right? Maybe other other tattooers might might disagree. But in Singapore back in those days, to get into tattooing, you had to have connections with the triads, or you had to know, uh, um, or you had to you know you know you had to interact with the with the triads with the gangs, right? And so, I was always like the the punk rock kid who were try who was trying to to communicate with the with the triads because you know the 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 gangsters had they have like entirely different mentality you know they have like this yeah this this gang mentality right whereas uh you know the 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 punk rock and the alternative uh the 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 metal kids they had a different kind of mindset so i I was always kind of trying to uh not fit in but i was trying to put myself on the same level so I could communicate with them because I was tattooing, you know, first couple of years of my career, I was tattooing like gang logos and, and, and a lot of those uh, uh, gang related stuff. Right. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately the, the punk rockers couldn't afford tattoos. Yeah. So I had to, yeah, I did, I did free tattoos in the first year, a lot of free tattoos. And I also had to tattoo um, uh, a lot of gang members because the first shop I worked in was owned by a couple of gang guys, right? So they would bring their, <clears throat> they would bring their uh, 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 gang members and then I would charge them really, really cheap just because they were, uh, they were friends with the owners. Yeah, and did they have without getting into details? But did they have specific imagery they would get, or is more hmm. like they would get whatever? No, 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 no. They had, uh, uh, they had specific gang 
symbols. I don't I don't know if it's it's still the same now, but uh, if anyone from Singapore is listening to this, they they would probably know the gangs are usually being represented by numbers. So there is, uh, yeah, there's there's different different groupings of numbers that represent different gangs, and then that gang will branch out, uh, with the with the number followed by the location of where their base is at. Oh wow! So it's like, it's like a ad. number. It's like it's like a number. Say for example, triple six. Yes. So uh, it will be six six six, and then I don't want to say the the ex, I don't want to say the the gang number. Yeah, some 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 yeah, you know some. Yeah, some so codes, the whatever. the example is the exa- example would be three four six, followed by uh, I don't know Paris, you know like three four yeah. six Paris. So it's the number and the location. Yeah. So a lot of crazy. a lot of times I did, uh, let's say if the number was triple six, right. I had to design the triple six in like a uh, uh, in like a tribal symbol, so it's less recognizable by the cops. But still, yeah. it you know you are still able to see it, but not so recognizable. Yeah, if you know, you know. Yeah, I remember. I used to I used to uh, go a lot to the shop of this guy, which I'm gonna send you a picture. You can Google it. His name was Maurizio Fiorini. Badass dude. He was the I grew up five streets down, six streets down from where he lived. Badass yeah. old tattooers. Now, now he passed. Super cool dude. And he was telling me, you know, I would go there and there was no really work. So I would just like listen all day to the stories over and over. Yeah. It's dope. You know, sitting on his barber chair with this uh, stick that inside had a sword. It was pretty awesome. And he would tell me all the stories of him tattooing these mafia people and stuff. And I always remember this guy. He said he walked in and he gave him a the design. And never said one word, ever. He never spoke. This guy no. you know, got a tattoo, paid, left, and the tattoo that he got was a fish. You know, because fish underwater don't talk. Oh, you know? so it's kind of like you know the how you how you say that in English. You know the I can only think in Spanish now. Chivato. Uh, you know, it's someone that gives away other people and stuff. You know, someone. You know, a what I mean? snitch. Uh, yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. You know, the snitch. You know, so yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's a, that's the thing. It's like it's a fish because fish don't talk. You know. <laughs> wow, <laughs> they're so fucking cool, though. They have a million of these stories. This guy, man. Yeah, you know, I I think the 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 best. I think that one of the best parts of our career, my career, our career, is listening to stories. You know, of of the of the real OGs. And uh, I really, really appreciate this communication because, you know, like these OGs are not going to put all this information up on a blog or they, they're not going to go on YouTube or, or any of these uh, uh, platforms to, to tell you stories, right? You had to be there at that hour when he's willing to talk, right? Yeah. If, you, if you went and like two hours later, you know, he might be drunk or he might be too busy to talk to you. So I think like conversations that you had or like stories that you've heard is so fucking precious. You know, yeah, and- scarcity makes it precious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah know, it's yeah, funny yeah. because we're talking about this over a podcast, you know, but the, the, the point is, you know, like there are things even even on the interviews that I have with people sometimes, you know, sometimes I had an interview with someone that was an hour and a half and in the end it became 45 minutes because then yep. we said okay yeah we can't say this we can't put this on tape and this and this and this you know so it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. It, this is kind of like is the idea of the podcast is not to record all of the stories it's kind of to celebrate them and then make people understand that those stories are important so that's why you should go there even just to visit someone and hopefully you're lucky like you say you know to get yeah. to get those tales yeah. um i was i was fortunate enough to to, to spend I think the first um, first three or four years of my career right smack in all of this mess you know because I think for for Singapore we progressed a little bit slower uh, compared to the West right compared to to the United States and and Europe so when uh, I think by 2003 2004 the West or, or, or many parts of, of the world were already 
opening up their minds. I think we took a little bit longer. So I was kind of, I mean, I didn't feel it at that time, but uh, I was right smack in the middle of all this, I wouldn't say illegal that was going on with tattooing, you know, that you could not avoid. Uh, 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 I mean, you could avoid, but that was just the route that I had to take because nobody wanted me, uh, nobody wanted to take me in as an apprentice because I was too young. And then the only shops that would accept me were the ones that were linked with the gangsters right so i have i have uh, a lot of experiences you know there's fucking there's like fights and stabbings and stuff that i saw at the age of like 16 17 it was like the it was really really wild and at that point i it didn't occur to me that i was in any danger but now you know like being much older and then thinking back fucking 16 year old kid with uh, working in a studio in, in Singapore's uh, uh, second red light district I didn't know I don't know why my parents allowed me to do that no? <laughs> it's a phase <laughs> let, let him stab a couple of people it will pass yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he has so, to go through I mean, the <laughs> yeah my my dad my mom and dad probably knew that that area was uh, was a dodgy area right but yeah. uh, they were fine with it so so if they were fine i was fine that's awesome yeah and uh, you know yeah. even after you start and then eventually you go better and you know then you go access to other places and stuff like that right you, you, mm. could you think about some of like or the biggest obstacle that you know you faced in your career like in, in order to learn or progress or whatever, yeah. What would you say was the biggest obstacle? Far, that's a good one. Um, I think the biggest obstacle for me was the starting point. Mm. You know, not I. I mean, it not that the whole journey was the, not that the whole journey became easy, but I think the the biggest obstacle was the starting point because I was too young. Getting a foot in the door, huh? Yeah. You, you know, imagine, you know, uh, imagine if someone came up to you right now who is in his 15, 16, right? Says to you, hey, Steph, uh, can, you, can you teach me tattooing? What would you do? Yeah, I, I never taught anybody in, in that way, but in general... I would think, okay, look, regardless of your age legally and stuff, but you don't have the mind for yeah. this, you know, because to tattoo, you need to have a set of responsibility, one or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tattoo is many things, right? Tattoo is also like homemade punk tattooing made at a party. You know, that's yeah. tattooing also, right? Yeah. So one thing I don't like is when someone claims to own tattooing, right? Tattooing is, is everything and many, many things, but still... You know, you, you need to have some degree of responsibility and understanding yeah. and, and dealing with people. When you're 15, what the fuck do you know? You don't know anything. Steph. You don't know. I, mean, I mean, I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything when I was 15, right? But I knew I really, really wanted to tattoo. That was the only thing I wanted to do. And of course, the, the, the adults were not, were really, really skeptical, right? Because I was... I didn't I didn't I didn't know how to communicate properly. I didn't you know, I was just a fucking stupid kid running about doing nonsense, right? So I think for me the the biggest obstacle would have been to 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 get into to, uh, the tattoo community. Uh, not I didn't care about being accepted, but uh, I wanted to I wanted the rest to, to, to accept that I was, I mean, I wanted them to, to leave me alone and let me, let me um, uh, exist in the world of tattooing, right? Yeah. Because uh, yeah, there, was, there was a couple of backlash that happened, you know, when the, when, the, when the older tattooers found out that this kid was tattooing, 
they were like, oh, what the fuck's this guy? Who, what was he doing? And uh, to me, that was like, that was kind of tricky because you, you needed to connect with these guys to learn stuff, right? Because this was pre-internet. So, uh, yeah, it was really, really a little bit more difficult jumping into the tattoo world at the age of 16. I think that's that's one of the, the biggest obstacles that I remember. I mean, the 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 entire journey is filled with with obstacles, right? Whether whether it's it's created by someone else or created by yourself. Uh, but yeah, the the I think coming into tattooing was the difficult, was the most most difficult obstacle. Yeah. And can you think about a person or something, even a thing or whatever that helped the most? In, in this journey? Whew. It's been what? Yeah, it's been it's been two decades. So I think different at, at different stage, different tattooers or different people uh, inspired me or, or, or gave me the push, right? At the at the very, very beginning of my career, we are talking about like the first few months, right? Um I met this guy who is still a close friend of mine. His name is Carlston. So he was the only uh, tattooer who was like, okay, let's let's accept Shane. You know, like he's 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 full of shit. He's young, but you know, like I I think he saw that I was determined to to uh, tattoo. So he kind of he was the one who who brought me into the my first studio. I mean, first professional studio. And uh, yeah, I think later on, there were a few others who kind of pushed me artistically. And uh, yeah, but I think the, I think the start, there was only one, one tattooer at the, at the very, very beginning who gave me like a really, really good uh, support. He, he was kind of like protective over me, right? Because I was the young kid hanging out with everybody who's like in their 20s and 30s. And uh, he always kept me protected, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think that with your, I don't know if you had friends your age at that time or you were hanging out just with older people. But if you had friends your age, you must have like felt them the coolest dude in the world. Right? You know? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hanging yeah, out with the of, older guys of, you know? and stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because like all the other kids were, uh, I don't know, all the other kids were like jobless, sniffing glue and stuff, right? And then I, I was like, whoa, the fucking tattooer uh, of the group now. Uh, I'm, I'm still friends with them. I'm still friends with, with my, my, you know, the, the guys that I hung out with in my teenage years. Um, <laughs> and I and I did like so many shitty tattoos on them. I'll try to collect some photos and then I'll send it to you. Dude, you yeah, should yeah, see my but... one of my best friend, like her leg is wow, oh, dude. I would get punched over other fucking hundred times in Paris <laughs> if I could take that thing back. Her leg is so fucked. But hey, you know, you gotta start somewhere, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always show this somewhere. like some... Yeah, you know, I show this like I was showing this to someone, I think recently like Young tattooer, friends of mine, good friends of mine, super insecure. I'm like, look, look what I did. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's okay. You know, like, yeah, you got to start somewhere, right? But um, oh, I didn't show you my legs, huh, Steph? I don't think so. Yeah, well, at least I don't remember. I have like, uh, I have like 22 year old masterpieces on my leg. You know, man. By yourself? Yeah, I was, I was trying out, I was trying to figure out the coil machine without, uh, <laughs> without rubber bands and shit I didn't know I didn't know like the needle dam I didn't know I didn't know nothing right uh, yeah so I I have like two legs of of experimental stuff <laughs> let's let's leave it at that <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm friend... gonna show you I'm gonna show you the next time we meet I'm gonna yeah, show you totally like uh, a good friend of mine Jerry from from Lucky Seven in Oslo super awesome dude tattooed for a million years big motherfucker um he was telling me once, no, I was telling this to a customer or something or another young tattooer. was like, hey, never trust a tattooer with only good tattoos. <laughs> you right. know? Because it means that they started yesterday. 
you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. fair enough. That's so true, though. When did you find when did you find Japanese? Like, obviously, it's an evolution, right? But yeah, it took me. Um, so my, I think my first encounter with a proper Japanese tattoo was was on this guy who who I met in two thousand and one. If if I remember correctly, I met him in two thousand and one. Um, and he had he had like this 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 rig piece like a namakubi by Horiyoshi tree, right? So that was my first encounter, and and hey, that that piece left so much impact. I don't know, it was so well done. The gray was so smooth. The the blood was really really like blood. You know, it's not it's not re- it's not realism, but uh, you know, there's there's. I don't know. It was just so fucking amazing compared to all the other stuff that I've seen in Singapore. So that was my first encounter. But I think it took me about seven, eight, maybe even nine years to to start doing uh, Japanese style because I was experimenting with other styles. You know, I didn't have the I didn't have the 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 possibility or i didn't have the the finances to travel to 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 uh get tattooed in japan so the the knowledge wasn't enough to specialize you know i have the love i have for the japanese style started right at the beginning of my career but i don't think uh i did or I don't think I was able to do Japanese style until maybe eight or nine years later. Yeah. I mean, and- just, I, I, I think that's just, that's just because I wanted to secure myself with, with enough uh, <laughs> uh, research and study before, before jumping into it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's definitely good advice because sometimes you see, you know, Japanese is something that, uh, you know, one lifetime is not enough you know no, three yeah. or ten you know so yeah. sometimes i see people that you know no judgment but you know like perhaps because they don't know any better and they attempt at either painting or you know executing like a japanese back piece and like listen you should start from cherry blossoms mm-hmm. you know because that has so many elements in there that you know it will take me years and years and years even to comprehend you know so yeah and yeah. Uh, you you're one of those that you know in going forward go kind of backward because your japanese is going backward yes in in yes. the sense of no you know not technically in the sense of your reference your your aesthetic yeah. simpler bolder and yeah how, how i i decided to go a lot bold i think a lot simpler when i moved back to singapore in in 2015 i don't know i it, the, the i didn't plan for this change i guess it was just the you know the more you do research or the more you study about the world of japanese tattoos you sort of i i kind of got uh so drawn into the old style because uh i remember when i when i first got into japanese style it was always you know i was always referencing philip lo make uh the the swiss guys right and after i don't know i think yeah after a couple of years of trying to do the neo japanese style i decided to go really really bold because that, that's i i think the I think the, the, the change started because of personal preference. You know, as, yeah. I, as, I, as I dug deeper, as I went deeper into the Japanese style, I realized that, hey, look, I don't need that much fancy stuff. You know, I want to keep it simple. I want to keep it bold. So, uh, you know, the, the tattoos don't look too awkward on the skin. You know, the tattoos look natural it's just it's a part of the the collector right it it no longer it that there is not a separation of like the tattoo and the wearer you know the 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 wearer and the tattoo becomes one so 
I think, you know, by cutting down details, making everything bolder, uh, simpler, I think you can you can achieve like this this I don't know this uh, uh, symbiosis. Yeah, 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 exactly symbiosis. The it's 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 a natural. The tattoos just look more natural on skin, you know. Yeah, but yeah, it comes with experience. I mean, that that kind of stuff you can't understand that right off the bat. You exactly need to see how they age. Exactly, you know? exactly. So you know what I. Um, so I, I started in Singapore and then I moved to Zurich, right? A couple of years. And uh, I saw work that I did. When I returned to Singapore, I saw work that I did 10 years ago, you know, with this more illustrative, uh, detailed Japanese style. And the, I don't know, I just, I just didn't like how it healed. Mm. You know, I, I think I wasn't satisfied with how certain colors heal over time. I mean, we are, you know, tattooing is so, uh, we are not fucking magicians, you know, we can't make uh, light pink stay bright or stay strong forever. The skin's going to age, the, the, you know, the wearer is going to, the, the collector is going to go to the fucking Bahamas for, for three months. So, um, a lot of stuff that I did that I, I used like a different kind of color palette. 10 years later, I saw the healed work and I wasn't, I wasn't happy at all. I mean, um, this is just my personal opinion, you know, like there's, there's so many approach, so many different approaches in tattooing. And I think my approach back in the day, trying to do uh, a lot of a lot of colors, a lot of details, I think that approach was not uh, appealing to me anymore. So that's why I started to to cut down on the details, making everything simpler, just so that it you know just so the the tattoos can live long. Yeah, and you know, regardless of the style, because then there is also like fine line that holds if it's done properly. You know, like regardless of the style, the thing is, this is obvious. You know, talking to a person like you, but many people, especially younger artists and stuff, they don't know this yet. The fact yeah. that the tattoo is not for you. Yeah, you know what I mean. You have you have fun with it. You're allowed to have fun with it for a while, and eventually, afterward with the pictures, but that is not for you. It's for the person. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah, should yeah, care yeah. about that first and foremost and be like, okay, is this going to look good on this person forever yeah. or not? Exactly. Because otherwise exactly. you're doing it for yourself and that's not, that's not it, right? Exactly. So yeah. I, you know, I think that's, that's why I, I paint to, to, I don't know when I, you know, with, with, with painting, I can go a little bit crazy, right? But with uh, with tattooing, it's always quite quite rigid. It's always you know I've got to I got to limit the uh, the usage of certain colors. But with uh, with painting, I think that's where I go a little bit crazy. You know, I start to I start to do a lighter. I don't know, like like a more faded effect or. Or, or I, I experiment with different with different things that I can't do on skin, right? So I think the painting really satisfy my creative, uh, how do you call it? My creative, my, my my cravings or my or my you know the 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 things I want to achieve, I can do it on paper. But uh, for the skin, no, I'm always quite. I mean, these days I'm really really careful. Not to go uh, too detailed or too too colorful. Yeah, yeah. It can be an artist on paper and and then an artisan on the skin. Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. And um, so, what's uh, talk about? A bit, can you talk a bit about the shop? Because the one thing that I connect to you in in my head, you know, when I think name Shane, apart from you as a person, all that, it's your crew. You know, because every time I meet you at a convention, you're with this beautiful crew, which, by the way, they're all super cool and humble and nice. And you guys go everywhere all together. It's dope. So I guess yeah. that in the shop, there must be a very good, like, family-like vibe, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, 
we, you know, I, I think I'm quite lucky because the the way the shop is run is I I don't I don't see myself as the as the boss or the owner or you know of course I'm the one paying the the bills and I'm the one doing all the the stuff right but I think they the 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 boys and the girls look after me more than more than I do them right mm. so and I think that builds like a really nice family bond of course uh I mean, it, it, it takes effort to, to bring a team together. So, uh, I don't know. It, it, you know, Steph, I never, I never planned to have like a, uh, uh, a big shop, you know? Yeah. And the, it just happened quite naturally though. So we were, uh, I think at first we were three. And then now all of us added together are nine. Um, but yeah, we, I, I think for me, the most important thing is not to place myself too high above anyone else. Even, even with the, the ones who tattoo for about one or two years, you know, I, because I've been there before, I've been at their point before. So I think I can really, really sympathize and understand like how they feel and all that. So I kind of treat all of them the same, you know. I, I mean we we treat each other the same, right? I mean you you've you've uh, we've hung out together with my crew. We went for dinner and we you know they got tattooed by you. Uh, I don't know if you can sense it but there's no there's not much forced hierarchy, you know. Yeah, if, no, you can tell. You can feel it. You can tell right? because and I like, told you, you, you guys like, are a crew. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mean, of course, of course, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the shop owner, but it's usually my my coworkers who, who, uh, who organize everything. You know, like I, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, the dis- catalyst. Dis- yeah, I'm the disorganized one who's like always fucking shit up. And then you've got, uh, yeah, you've got my coworker Sylvester and, and Ian and the rest of them, who's constantly, you know, reminding me, hey, yo, you gotta, you gotta, uh, you gotta print this. You got to, you know, you got to do this. Uh, 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 you gotta start printing the stickers because we're gonna leave in two weeks. You know, like stuff yeah. like that. So I'm like, oh yeah, true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, hey, why did you open a shop and put together a crew? Because you're an, an incredibly organized leader and you want to inspire people. It's like, no, because I can't keep my shit together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I need yeah, people to clean for me. And you know, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the truth about <laughs> this, you know. Uh, I, I get asked a couple of times because, you know, when you when you hang out with the tours, we like to, we kind of like to, to, to share our our career right so i i've been asked by other shop owners like how, so how do you how do you run your shit right and my answer is always i don't run nothing <laughs> i don't, I don't. <laughs> yeah i don't I, I really don't the the my i think my my i'm lucky because my crew is they are all really organized and and they are really really kind to me so yeah, yeah. That's the that's the. You should come someday, man. I will. I will. I told you I will. I don't know. I just need to put the money together and get organized. I got I got something coming this year, like a book release, an exhibition, and this and that. Yeah. So that's taking that's taking you know the time and a, a trip planned with some you know with my family to go to Japan, which I need to save for and stuff. So I need to yeah. see what's possible. But as soon as yeah. I can, like in time and money, I'll come. I'll come with Omar. You know, I was at the Perfect. shop the other day and I said, look, we're going. He's serious. You know, like, dude, yeah, of course yeah, yeah. you're going. Please, we just need please, to get organized. Please. It's going to be so please, much Please, I tell you what. I tell you what. We, me, you, him, Thailand. Yeah. We already have a board. <laughs> I showed you. We already have a boarding pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we already have a boarding pass. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. seriously, like, when, when I tell him, like, oh, Shane, like, Omar's face lights up. I was like, "Yeah, we're going." It's like, yeah, <laughs> you know. So I don't know when yet, but we'll definitely come, man. 
for sure. Yeah, please come. Please come. We're, sure. gonna have, we're gonna have a lot of fun, but you're gonna have to try to smuggle some chewing gum, bubble gum for me. I'll talk to Omar. Just get him, to <laughs> get him, get him, to, get him, get him to swallow like I don't know ten packets, uh, yeah. ten packets of different flavors with little eggs and stuff, and that's how we pay our, our way across border and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever get in jail or something, I probably got chewing gum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that's that's you know better <laughs> going to jail for chewing uh, for chewing gum smuggling is better than a lot of other things, right? yeah that's awesome <laughs> and um okay i'm gonna ask you a couple of more things and then i'll I set you free um so this sounds kind of serious right but you know don't go it's not meant to be but what do you think makes a good tattooer i know it's a big question whatever but if you can think if you have like imagine you're telling to your kid that tomorrow wants to be a tattooer it's like okay look you know perhaps remember this mm. whoa we're getting serious now huh steph yeah I like I like this I like this serious part. Um, what makes a good tattoo? Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I shouldn't say names, but I I, know, I can like, I can see I know, going through your mind. I, you're like, hey, I can't say that I know. Yeah, yeah, I can't say that. But <laughs> I well, anyway, back to the back to the question. This this the the serious side of the question. What makes a good tattoo? Um. What makes a good tattoo? I think he or she, they, them, it, they need to, they need to love the craft. And I, I think love, love for the craft is the starting point for everything, right? Because if you do not sincerely love the craft, then you are in it for a different kind of reason, right? Like, let me ask you, why, why did you start tattooing? Because you fucking love, you, you know, you got tattooed and then you fell in love with the craft, right? And I think when, I mean, tattooing now, it's, it's kind of like the career path for a lot of young people, right? But a lot of them come into tattooing. Uh, not that I'm trying to act all OG or whatever, you know, like I'm constantly, constantly learning stuff every day. But what I see uh, is a lot of tattooers coming into tattooing without love for the craft. And without proper love, I think, you know, they are, yeah, they're just going to seek to to profit from the whole tattoo game and not giving back, right? So, like, what, what you have done in the last few years, you know, like I've always, I've, I'm always uh, uh, supporting your cause. I'm always, you know, whenever you, you, you have uh, 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 something going on, I want to get involved because your, what you are doing gives back to the people, gives, gives back to tattooing, right? But, um, you know, like you're not going to profit from our, chat today you're not i mean you're not going to financially profit maybe you profit from it with a couple of laughs and and you know like uh uh uh, uh you 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 get more of more of an insight over tattooing in in singapore but uh you're not gonna make millions out of this 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 chat right yet you are still devoting one two hours of your of your time talking to this weird guy so i think you know like yeah love love for the craft man makes a good tattooer definitely yeah because it, it, it goes beyond you yeah you know it's not it's not oh because i have fun it's even like no because i love to be part of this you know so yeah. you're, like you said you're not anymore you you're part of something Exactly. Right. So you want to care of that. And is there something like on the other end of the spectrum, right? Which I'm sure like everybody have something and have different things. Is there something that you see today that you think, okay, that is detrimental for tattooing. That is bad. And there should be less or any of that stuff that you see and like, oh, this almost or does make me upset. Without making enemies, you know, but, you know, like as, as a general concept. Well, you know? I, I, you know, I, I'm not afraid of making enemies, man. Like, yeah, but you know what I mean. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
What do I see today? Fuck me. Um, a potential problem could be these tattoo schools, right? That run uh, curriculums for, you know, three weeks and then they give you a certificate and then you're a professional tattooer. I mean, this was bound to happen even before this whole uh, ex uh, explosion. I knew a couple of, I knew one or two guys back in Singapore who were running this kind of, not tattoo schools, but they were taking in apprentices for, you know, a certain amount of cash, teaching them for a couple of weeks and then or a couple of months and then uh, uh, setting them off, right? Letting them go and then bringing in a new batch of 10 to 15 guys. So uh, I think with the, uh, with, I think the trouble with having these tattoo schools, not that it is a direct threat to me, but it, 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 it can pose a threat to the whole tattoo community in general, you know? So yeah. I think this, uh, well, but, you know, who knows, maybe in, in five years, 10 years, tattoo schools will be such a normal thing, right? But yeah, I think I think that's one of the one of the things that can be quite. Uh, I wouldn't say pose a threat, but it can be quite complicated if you if you look at it. Uh, this some of these schools are providing. Yeah, like I like I said, you know, like short term costs for people who have no clue what tattooing is about. I think that if you want to be a tattooer, yes, maybe uh, a tattoo school would be the first place you want to go to for information, right? But tattooing is more than just uh, information written down, you know? You, I think you need to experience it. You need to get tattooed. You need to talk to tattooed people. You need to hang around tattooers, right? So that I think the tattoo schools, they're going to, you know, they might be able to replicate this environment, but it's going to be artificial, right? It's, it's never the same as hanging out at, like you mentioned, like this, this OG guys uh, and hearing about stories, you know, I think that's quite important in the, the journey of, of being a tattooer. Yeah, you know, it's such a thing that this specific topic is such a hot potato and not because, you know, people have opinions and in the end of the day, who cares? You know, like I respect your opinion as long as you respect mine, right? Sometimes yeah. some people are like, no, my opinion is the thing. Okay, cool. Uh, but um, it's more because it's hard to tell because there is such a spectrum of experiences, you know? So for example, yeah. you could have, I know people that give apprenticeships and they created amazing tattooers on their old profiles, right? In yep. terms of like ethics, in terms of skills and stuff. And then there is some people that just literally abused people. And, yep. you know, there is, the, there is the old school thing of like, oh yeah, but that's, you know, you gotta be tough to do. I agree to a certain extent to the fact that struggle can be good, a certain kind of struggle, but not certain kind not of abuse, abuse, you know? Yeah, so yeah, sometimes not abuse, it's like just straight yeah. abuse, you know, like you're not yeah. teaching anything, you know? Yeah. And, so it's like, okay, you get the whole spectrum. And maybe in school is the same. You got people that do it for the money because I met with people like this, like maybe like 15 years ago, because I was working mm -hmm. in Spain, living in Spain. And in order to keep working, I was working already with one of the oldest tattooers in Spain, but I needed a piece of paper that said, blah, blah, cool. And at the time it was 600 euros for like three days. Nice. And the course was run in a aesthetics a treatment centers, like people that give waxing and, you know, plug eyebrows. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. And they were teaching those things. I'm like, okay, that looks legit. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I go there, right? For my three days, okay, this is a waste of money, but whatever. And then in the same class that I was, there was people that were there for the school. So they would pay, yeah. and this is 15 years ago, they would pay 12, 1500 euros in the south of Spain for the course of like two weeks, three weeks from this woman that walks people for a living. So she has no clue what tattooing is. And she was teaching them how to tattoo. So Shit. by the end, they were, we were like tattooers. So by the end of it, guess what? 
And at the end of it, they had to do a final exam to see if they were ready. I'm like, that's funny. There was and even an exam. An exam. And guess what? I had to do the exam too. And I said, look, I work already with, with one of the, you know, the first tattooers in Spain that had like yeah. shops all over. It's like, oh, you got to do the exam anyway. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> Whatever. Give me, give me stuff. No, you bring your machine. No, you give me stuff. So she gave me this thing that was like short circuit. It was horrible. Um, anyway, so basically they had a sign outside that said, this is 15 years ago. They had a sign outside that says tattoos for 12 euros 50 right no yeah so you have this army of desperates you know they're like yeah i want a tattoo for 12 euros 50 so basically it was like a slaughterhouse you go there you get this tattoo by people that never touched a tattoo machine apart from two weeks of an esthetician explaining them stuff which was nonsense and then uh, that was horrible it was like a horror movie man you would see like those machines was like "Ah!" people bleeding everywhere like stuff that was fucked holy oh my god and then it would live with a paper that said you are a tattooer and they can open shop. So you see, oh, it's wow. not you, you know? So I'm sure you have this. And also you, you have some people that are like, you know what, this is happening. At least let me regulate it. Because yeah. again, there is some people. So that's why it's tricky, not because it's good or bad. Uh, like, you know, by definition, it's like, okay, how is this going to be done? You know, yeah. then obviously there is the fact that this is generating, this is just mathematics, right? Logic. This is generating. When you have, let's say in one country, Every year, 100, 200 uh, new tattooers that can open shop. That's just logic. There's no, there's, there is not for everybody, you know? Yeah. Beyond yeah. the fact that they don't have the, the experience, the direct experience. So it's so tricky, man. But yeah, yeah. I, I see your point. And um, if you could, I don't think you're the kind of guy, the kind of regret, the guy, let me rephrase this, the regret kind of guy. Because to me, you, you look like the guy that full on, fuck it. But if you could go somehow magically go back in time, right? And get like a, send a message, get a call or something to 16 years old, you. With the stuff that you know now, what would you tell yourself in regard to whatever tattooing and, you know, your journey? In, in, in regards to the tattooing? Or, or with your whatever, you know. Just, hey, listen. What would you tell I, yourself? I never, I, never really, I never really spoke about this to a lot of people but I think at, uh, first two years of my tattooing uh, I really wanted to quit because of, of the backlash that I, I received you know from uh, from fucking up people's skin and from you know older tattooers who were who were really really mean uh, I think I would yeah if I could go back in time to my 16 year old self I would say don't give a fuck, man. Continue not giving a fuck because you already didn't give a fuck. Uh, continue giving a, f- continue not giving a fuck, and then just push harder, right? Because that the uh, the first two years, 16, 17 years old, I wanted to quit that doing. I think at least three or four times. You know, I'm really, really grateful that I didn't quit, but I was constantly on the verge of uh, just cutting everything off because. Uh, technique wasn't good. I couldn't figure out that doing. Uh, I couldn't get any information. You know, like when you when you asked a tattoo or something, they were fucking hesitant to give you any any logical information, right? So it it would be it would be like if you I went to ask friends or like I went to to ask tattooers, how do you make this uh, a curved magnum? You know, and their answers would be like, can't you see for yourself? You know, like they, they would take out the needles and like, can't you see? Just look, you know. So uh, me being that young, yeah, I was, I was still insecure, you know. So I would definitely go back and knock myself in the head and say, yo, asshole, don't fucking quit, you know. Because... Uh, Eventually, when I when I when I figured stuff out, tattooing gave me everything. You know, tattooing gave me uh, I don't know. Tattooing gave me a really good life. I get to meet so many amazing people, have so many different crazy experiences that I really really treasure. Um, yeah. What about you? I'm curious. I'm. 
I'm actually I I'm gonna <laughs> ask you questions now. I'm gonna start asking you questions now. So what what about you? What about you? If you could go back, the same question, right? If you could could go back in time, what would you what would you have done or 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 what would you have wanted to do or say to yourself? You know, like eventually, I think that I would have done everything the same because that's your personality. So the thing yeah. is, you know, if you if I would tell maybe myself something 15 years ago, maybe I wasn't in the right place to understand it, right? But yeah. let's say hypothetically I was, I would just say, chill the fuck out. You know, because <laughs> chill the fuck out. Because I I, I am to, by nature, now I work a lot on it, you know, but by nature, I quite hard on myself and quite, yeah. you know, demanding and be like, oh, I can't do more. I can't do more. Yeah. So I lived so many years with, let's say you do something, whatever that is, even like, oh, you went to this crazy party. Yes, it was amazing. It's like, I can't do better. I can fucking party with twice the people or something. You know? <laughs> so not only in the drawing and painting and tattoo, you know, like anything, you know, like, so I would just say like, dude, chill out, man, because where the fuck are you running? Like, where are you trying to go? You know, because eventually the, 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 the horizon keep moving, you know? So I'm like, yeah. no, I can do more, more, more of what? So just to try, even if it's hard, even today by knowing it, sometimes it's hard, just be present, you know, Enjoy, be grateful because uh, you don't know, you know, when the when the ride is over, you know. So just yeah. chill out. Yeah. But I did you ever so. apprentice? Did you ever apprentice under somebody? Not formally. I used to go to this. Uh, I told you, I used to go to this shop with this uh, yeah. Maurizio Frini, these old tattooers. So it mm-hmm. wasn't a formal apprentice uh, apprenticeship. But we just go there, and then one day, you know, the guy that was working with him for many years, the make machine, you know, would teach yeah. me how to make machines. And then, you know, Maurizio and I and then would tell me something, but it was never a formal apprenticeship. It was yeah, just me like, yeah. you know, banging at the door until they let me in and be like, <laughs> <laughs> just like trying to pick every single thing that would, you know, about Yeah, like whatever. a spy, like a spy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, just like anything to hang out there and do whatever I could to help and just like, yeah. oh, maybe today I can learn one thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I I think that that learning process is so fucking precious. That learning process, it's uh, it's so much so much more valuable because, you know, you 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 didn't have this information at the tip of your fingers, or you you, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't uh go on YouTube and type in how to build a machine, right? Yeah. So I think that that experience is so valuable and uh not 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 me being whiny or like talking about the past and shit but i think this this kind of experiences they i don't know they just they just they just uh trigger something in you that is extremely different from doing research on uh youtube and and looking at at a youtube video right it it's just so different though because when you're at the shop in in the shop where you you picked up uh, tattooing you know there's there's uh fucking sensory overload right you you know you hear you heard machines buzzing you you hear people cursing and swearing and then you know you, you you're trying to you're trying to gather information but at the same time there's so much distractions going on you know you're like oh what's this painting or oh, what's this this thing in that that was what's this uh, a brown liquid in that bottle he's using you know like there's so much uh, uh, real life experience that you probably absorb uh, when you were hanging out at the shop and I yeah. think that's that I think that sensory overload is very very special because I, I remember you know I remember the smell of Dettol and the, and the smell no the smell of Dettol and cigarettes and fucking beer, right? And sometimes even puke because clients will come in drunk and then they start puking, right? Yeah. So like, it's, it's a, you know, it's it's not only just looking at, at electronic uh, uh, stuff on the, on the, on your phone screen or your computer screen. It is, uh, you know, smelling stuff, hearing stuff and, and feeling stuff, you know? Yeah, because it's, it, because it's real like you know the thing that you just said i can connect one specific thing to a smell that you close your eyes and makes me think tattoo not even the toe the toe yes but even more than that the fucking deodorant stick stick you know oh, that we yeah. used to put, 
to put stencils yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Before, there was no, there was the, no like that one specific used... brand that we used to have, you know, and like I smell them like tattoos because that's <laughs> yeah, the thing yeah, that you yeah, would yeah, put yeah. to put and a stencil on. Yeah. There was no stencil hey. stuff, you know. So on that's why. On the side note, on the side, here's something fucking stupid. Yeah. So, uh, I. Uh, I don't know. You can edit this off, but this is just this is just some extra fucking stupid stuff that I did. So instead of using the the uh, deodorant stick, I couldn't get that particular brand right that I that I knew tattooers were using. And uh, this was like I think my first week or second week of tattooing. So I was like, okay, what? <clears throat> I I didn't. You know, there was no sense of of fucking cross contamination prevention. You know, like I I I knew I needed to be a little bit careful, but you know, like what the fuck, man. So instead of using the deodorant stick, I use a fucking glue stick, bro. A glue stick. A glue stick. Uh, you know dude, this. One, you know this. You the know the, paper. The, the, the the glue stick for paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I use that. Dear. I use hey. I use that for for a stencil. For, I for how long? I huh? For how? No, long? no, no, no. Just for just for like one. Just or two once. Tattoos. Just okay. for like one or two tattoos. Have you seen those because, tattoos after? Yeah, it, I mean, they survive. Like the the guys are. I'm still thinking how, how about cleaning? Like when you were wiping, like let's I say know. you make a line and you wipe. The fuck? I know. Imagine, imagine. Oh, dude. True story, though. If you, you know, if you ask anyone who who uh, who got tattooed by me during the the time of I think uh, two thousand, from June two thousand onwards, then there's hundred percent one or two guys who will be like, "Fuck, Shane, use a fucking glue stick on me." I swear. <laughs> yeah, That's but so that, that didn't that didn't work though because yeah of the wiping and you know like tissues started getting stuck on it. Oh, that's so funny, dude. <laughs> definitely, definitely, someone will try that. I'm sure <laughs> they hear this. Yeah, well, I <laughs> want to do a glue tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? We're gonna close this with something very important. You have a message that you want to send to Yushi. If, I thought if, we I thought I thought we're not gonna tell him we're doing this podcast. But I'm sure you, you have some something you want to get across. Well, I think <laughs> I think he needs to I really, really think he needs to get his ex straight. He needs to start behaving himself, you know. He needs to start fucking uh he needs he needs to stop doing all this nonsense. He has two kids, you know, he needs to learn how to behave himself, he needs to pay bills, so he needs to know he, he needs to start working man he can't he can't he can't he can't live off welfare for the for the rest of his life right so he needs to start working he needs to start i don't know doing tattoos right because i don't know what he's been doing last 25 years so i i really really think yushitake needs to start tattooing i mean tattooing properly right yeah <laughs> <laughs> No, no, hey, no. But uh, it's so uh, funny yeah, when when I, when, I, when I saw you two guys because I met Yushi the first time in in New Zealand, and then we interviewed, and then remember we did that food bag thing where you were giving class a class about your backgrounds and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know that you guys, you know, were friends and stuff. And then because people would pay for charity, and then they connect. Remember, and then Yushi yeah, showed yeah. up. And it's so yeah. funny because you're trying to build serious and he goes like, yeah, but what about your mom and stuff? Like, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys are fucking hilarious. You guys yeah, are fucking I think, like- you know, we go, we go way back. I think I, I met him because um, I was working in this studio called Ink Tank, right? And then Mick, Mick from Switzerland, his, his studio, his new studio, got uh there was some renovation problem i think the upstairs was leaking so then he came to work with us for i think a month or so and i think uh yushi was doing some convention in in germany right and i think that's that's when we met that's the first time we met and then uh yeah there's probably a lot of things i shouldn't say here but (laughs) we, we we had fun we had fun in zurich and 
yeah he's he has he's been like a like a shitty older brother to me you know like someone who's who's someone who you can never count on someone who's like constantly backstabbing you yeah that's that's yushi <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll tell him we'll tell him yeah, we'll, yeah. no 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 i mean joke, jokes aside jokes aside he's like you know he's like the he's like the big brother he's like my big brother i call him sometimes for for advice you know if if uh even with my even with my my paintings you know uh i remember f- finishing like a, a a set of paintings and you know i gave him a call and i say hey yo can you please have a look at uh, at my paintings and let me know if i did anything wrong or if if uh, if there's anything that's not logical to you and uh over the years he's given me quite a bit of advice not not always good ones but mostly quite quite all right like quite uh quite meaningful advice yeah awesome (laughs) we'll tell him that yes bro it was great thank you so much for you know all this stuff and please everybody that listen to this send send shane some chewing gum get him (laughs) out of this flavorous slumber he's living in (laughs) i'll smuggle it i promise yeah please please you, uh, I think you and Omar each can smuggle 30 packets of uh, uh, chewing gum. You don't know what my butt can smuggle. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steph. You'll see. First of all, can you tell people where they can find you? And even if they're not from Singapore, because you travel a lot and stuff. Mm-hmm. So where social media is, you know, where if they want to get a hold of you, see your stuff, get in touch. Uh well they could look me up on Instagram. What's my Instagram? My Instagram is Shane underscore Tan. S H A N E underscore T A N. So that's where you can see the social media side of me. But if you want to uh get to know me in person, you can Come I to Roxy like Bar it's... every Friday and Sunday between nine and ten. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel like this is like uh, some really really like a fucking dating app, you know. Uh, I don't know. So do, do you like puppies? I... How do you feel like about what? commitment? Do you like puppies? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, you you anyone who wants. What's to the name of the shop? Feather Cloud Tattoo. What's your like? Tra- do you have any traveling plans that are confirmed yet, or you kind of? No, no, no. For now, uh, I think next few months I'm gonna be in Singapore. So, uh, yeah, no plans for the next four or five months apart from Singapore. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen in summer or or where what what we're gonna do yet, but. Um, I'm going to be in London till the, I think the 30th of December. And then we're going to go back to Singapore and I'll, I'll, I'll be there for the next couple of months. Do you do Aachen? No, right? You don't do no, Aachen? No, 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 Dude, you no. Dude, you should. You should. I know, I know. It's uh, super good. I might try in the next year or so. Yeah. I, I would definitely recommend that it because it's so good. Like you will love yeah. it because it's real. You know, there is yeah, no... Yeah nothing around it just like tattoos and good people and you know yeah like, yeah, yeah. So, yeah i heard i heard so many good things about the convention though yeah bro hopefully i see you sooner than later yes please do the do that smuggling of chewing gums to singapore for me do you like any specific flavor nothing no, no. spicy because you know i want to try i want to try everything perfect okay <laughs> Rem- remember that you said this when no, I, I mean, no, I mean, chewing gums. Not, not when I order not, for you in, in gonna, Paris. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna eat that ass. I'm Some not gonna ass eat that. sausage chewing gum flavored stuff. Ah, <laughs> I'll make it. I'll make it for you, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Thank you so much for the for the time. It was fun. Hey, thank you so much. It was really nice seeing you. Even if it's just on the screen, it's it's really really nice seeing. Yeah, it's you. better than nothing. It's yeah. always nice. It's always nice. 
always nice seeing you bro hey, really thank nice. you so thank much thank you so much thanks Likewise. for having me thank you thank so you much thank you for making the time brilliant take care bro much take love take care love you bye bye, bye.